and I have the same class. I don't want, and also I don't want him feeling uncomfortable too. I mean, you know, a guy, especially a straight guy, they still have this kind of thing about homosexual. So I don't want him to feel uncomfortable. I don't know what to tell you, Rose. Tell her that. I tell her. You don't. Rose, I don't know what to tell you. I'm doing the best I can. You ain't been coming home for work. Stop. With time enough to change clothes and run out. This isn't yes. working, Scott, is it? Try some. No, you want to call it the best you can do? Okay. <laughs> I would be willing to explain, but right now I really would feel uncomfortable because when someone looks at me I think they know about it and they're making fun of me I don't want that to happen I want to be comfortable in class and not problem about how these people hate me or something just because I'm transsexual It really is really uncomfortable to be preoperative and just to have the organ there and I really like with absolutely no emotional attachment to it whatsoever just really wanting to get rid of it. It really does limit what I can really have like with an intimate relationship because it's not like I can really be intimate like with myself or anything either. It's not like like my real body sort of thing. It's just like like a mask I guess and it's really hard. I fortunately was able to talk with my parents. It was really exciting because, you know, then I, I finally have my date set in time and it's gonna be, gonna be March 18th, you know, it's gonna get done. I have my parents to support me and I was really nice when that finally happened. For the surgery, I'm planning to go to Dr. Marcy Bowers, mainly because she's trans herself, so you know, she's been through it. She's also been a gynecologist, so, you know, I believe she she's going to be the best choice. Like, what I did is um, I made, like, a little, you know, paper link chain to with one link for every day until surgery. How it works is, after each day, you know, once the day is done, I rip off the link for that day. And, you know, I just keep doing that every day until surgery. And then I'm going to go into surgery with my last link. And then I'm going to frame it. That's <laughs> what I've decided. The surgery really is important to me because I really want my body to be able to match my mind so that I can express myself that way too. I should have shaved. You really should have shaved. You've needed to shave for a week. I've been lazy. <laughs> it takes two minutes. No, it doesn't. It takes, it takes longer minutes. than that. I'm not going to lie, like, even though I fight against jealousy a lot of the time, I don't necessarily want to be involved in conversations in which people are talking about changes. That kind of stuff, like, gets under my skin um, in a really intense way. Well, I have several friends who have started the process of physical transition, and it's really hard. But why am I doing this to myself? I noticed that my voice started changing, like, probably a couple of weeks after the first shot. It changed pretty quickly. I started growing facial hair after about a month and a half, and getting some hair on my stomach and stuff like that. And my legs were always hairy, but they're... Pretty, quite a bit hairier than they used to be. 
while other people move along, which is great and normal, like, why am I waiting? You know, and I've had to fight with, with feelings of hostility and, and just like pain. Well done. At this point, I just I need to start the process of physical transition because I feel like there's no other time to do it. How long can you wait? You know, and what does that actually give me to wait? And what does it take away from me to wait? I think it needs to begin. Andy is a person that's in my life. He is a um, transgender identified person. <laughs> and he's someone that I clash on a personality level more than I clash with anybody else. Andy! I guess, like, politically, I would identify as a revolutionary anarchist. See, Bush? Based on my anti-capitalist and anti-authoritarian views, I take part in radical organizing and direct actions against the state. I kind of see myself as a little more, a little more mature, um, and a little more responsible about things than I see Andy as being. First time I was detained by the police was at an action, an anti-war action last year. This is me. And here comes a bike. Right here, you see them slam my head into the ground. See that? I mean, Andy's been bailed out of jail by us so many times, it's not even funny anymore. Who wants to carry the megaphone? Anybody? Um, I'll take the baseball bat. Okay. Somebody is auctioning off three, I believe, KKK robes. Whoever dug up the story and decided to start up this protest, Andy, Andy Dahl, um, <laughs> they, they just didn't do enough research on it. Are they protesting the fact that it's being sold or that they're buying it? Who knows? They're protesting that they read the KKK in the newspaper, basically. Uh, that's so stupid. Yeah. They just see the word KKK and like, obviously, yeah, KKK fucked up, bad, we get it. But like, it doesn't, it's not that black and white anymore. Hey, do you all want spray paint in your car? Do you want to just walk up there with it? Like, do you want some? Does anybody want any? That's why I just don't trust anything on that listserv anymore. Like people just don't do their researches. They just they hear like certain pun words and they're like, okay, run and start protesting. And it's like no Nazis, no KKK, no fascist USA. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. Woo! Oh, did you kill me, dude? That's like it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, he's here. Hate has no home here. Hate has no home here. Hate has no home here. No Nazis, no KKK, no fascists, USA. No Nazis, no KKK, no fascists, USA. No Nazis, no KKK, no.